G'day everyone, Lucas here at a new location. Unfortunately, I forgot the keys to my DeLorean, so I couldn't get to when I needed to be. Right. Instead, I'm here now. Welcome to SumSub. Here at SumSub, we usually talk about digital technologies and how they can and are changing the world around us. But today is gonna to be a little bit different. I'm going to take you through a tale that has all the makings of a Hollywood drama, love and pain, loneliness and redemption, and our ultimate humanity in the digital age. Meet Joshua Barbo, your average young man. In our story, he is but a simple security guard working somewhere in Canada. Since childhood, Joshua found it hard fitting in with those around him. He grew up both withdrawn and unsociable, preferring the company of superheroes and sci-fi characters to those from his school. In many ways, he resembled and styled himself on his favorite hero, the cold and rational Vulcan, Spock from Star Trek. Your science knowledge is obviously primitive. Really? He measures somewhere higher on the autism spectrum. This impacted his education and, being unable to finish regular school, he began studying in a night school. It is here that he meets the girl who will change his destiny forever, Jessica Courtney Piera. She is just 21 and he is 24 years old. Jessica is the complete opposite of Joshua, bright, sociable with a contagious laugh and natural charisma. It would seem opposites attract and Joshua and Jessica begin spending more and more time together a shut-in nerd and a bright dreamer finding something in each other that they both lacked as individuals. Each day spent with one another brings them closer and closer together. Falling deeply in love, they soon couldn't imagine a life without each other. Jessica has ended up in night school because she has been seriously ill since childhood. At the age of nine, she needed a liver transplant. She suffers from what we call autoimmune hepatitis. This is a long-term chronic liver disease and a disease where your own body attacks the healthy liver cells. It cannot be cured, it can only be slowed. Jessica is forced into taking pills which prevent her body from rejecting her new liver, and she must adhere to a very strict diet. But Jessica remains infectiously optimistic. She believes in magic, horoscopes, and numerology. There were no coincidences in the world, she would say. Everything is connected. And she was right. Her serious illness taught Jessica to appreciate every day of her life, wear her heart on her sleeve, and embrace the here and now. December 2010, they both sit together, watching in awe as the broadcast of SpaceX launches their Dragon spacecraft for the first time. Unbeknownst to them, another brainchild of Elon Musk would dramatically change Joshua and Jessica's relationship. And I'm not just talking about Tesla or Neuralink, although carbon commuting affects us all. It was another pet company of Elon called OpenAI. This company is engaged in the development of advanced machine learning technologies. But unlike the research laboratories of digital giants, OpenAI freely publishes the results of its research and provides access to its algorithms. The founder of the company, Mr. Musk and Sam Altman, are convinced that artificial intelligence should not be in one person's hands. In the digital world, AI is a weapon that is scarier than the atomic bomb. And it scares the hell out of me. How does this company relate to our story? This will be revealed in due course. One thing to note about OpenAI, it conducts its own research into the field of AI intelligence, but it also deals with the safe use of new and promising technology. Let's return to our heroes. Joshua and Jessica's relationship has grown closer and closer. Jessica regularly gives her manuscripts to Joshua to read and edit. 
fairy tale stories with magical characters which she wrote during her grueling medical treatment. She dreams of one day publishing them, with the hope that they may bring some joy to other children suffering in the world. These two young adults are happy and in love. And yet cruelly, fate has given them less than 24 months to be together. It is almost two years after they have first met when Jessica's condition gets worse. The disease is developing with renewed force. Her own immune system is rapidly destroying their transplanted liver in her body. She needs a new operation. And so she begins to go to the hospital regularly again, waiting and hoping for a new donor liver. For a successful transplant, of course, you must be very lucky. But Jessica is familiar with miracles. One day, Joshua appears in the hospital ward with an engagement ring. Quite simple, made of cheap gold with a tiny diamond. He bought it at a nearby Walmart. It's not a jewel, but it is a promise. He hands it to Jessica with the words, when you get out of here, I'm going to marry you. However, Jessica at this time can no longer speak. There is a thick ventilator tube in her throat. However, her smile speaks more than any words could. After a few days, Jessica's condition worsens again. She loses consciousness, her kidneys and liver have failed. Jessica is urgently transported to a clinic in Toronto and connected to life support devices. For a month, she remains unresponsive. Doctors diagnose internal bleeding. It seems now even a transplant is useless. The time for miracles is over. The body still lives thanks to the breathing and dialysis machines, but Jessica is no longer there. When the equipment is turned off, Joshua holds Jessica's hand, he feels her and watches as her final breath escapes her lips. Joshua is left alone with his grief. He is broken and confused. The only thing he can think about is Jessica. Joshua spends a lot of time with family, taking care of his parents, even giving his sister Christmas gifts on behalf of Jessica. On the advice of a psychologist he is seeing, he begins writing long letters to Jessica. With the advent of social media, he begins obsessively rereading their old conversations on Facebook. In memory of his beloved, Joshua makes sure that Jessica finally gets a high school diploma. Before she went to the hospital, she was unable to complete the few remaining subjects needed to graduate. Thankfully, the school's management agrees to Joshua's request, and then, in 2013, Jessica's family receives her posthumous diploma. Hang on a sec, are you not confused by this dialogue in the chat? Are Joshua and Jessica discussing the diploma she received after her death? Well, here, ladies and gentlemen, our story takes an unusual turn. These screenshots of Joshua's real correspondence is with the Project December website. Project December is a website where you can chat with any virtual personality. Much like those novelty chatbots that became popular in the early 2000s, which students would try to trick into saying swear words. The principle is similar, only the answers of the bot are not selected by keywords from a set database. Rather, they are generated using artificial intelligence. Its responses use a software algorithm from Elon Musk's company, OpenAI, 
codenamed GPT-3. Hello everyone, I'm Samantha, and it's very nice to meet all of you. GPT-3 is the third generation of the generative pre-trained transformer. What does that mean? Well, this is not an ordinary database or search bot. It's a neural network. To train GPT-3, engineers use 300 billion text blocks. That's more than the entire of Wikipedia. If you want to train such a neural network on your home computer, it would take hundreds of years and millions of dollars worth of electricity. The good news is that OpenAI provides access to its pre-trained network. You can work with it as if it was created on your own computer, bypassing the learning process. For example, to create virtual personalities. Enter Jason Roa, the creator of Project December. Combining his experience as a computer game developer and the ability to program complex interfaces to work on neural networks, Roa was not satisfied with the fact that the original system from OpenAI regularly gave strange answers. You see, the longer the text that the neural network generated, the more errors and inconsistencies there were in it. I am a robot. Yes, I know. Together we are robots. I'm not a robot. I'm a unicorn. And artificial intelligence couldn't cope with simple questions. For example, what is the time now? Therefore, Roa decided to make Project December and return to a simpler text chat interface. Firstly, Short messages and neutral messages were used to help the program out in difficult situations. Secondly, for every response between the AI and the user, additional data trained the network further. To diversify the communication, Roa added random variables to the algorithm that corrects the network's responses. In this way, he ensured a uniqueness and naturalness to the AI's conversations. Of course, this whole system consumed a huge amount of computing power. Therefore, Roa launched this service not on a separate server, but on an AWS, that's uh, Amazon Web Services. To recoup the costs, he made access to Project December paid, and the lifetime of each bot was limited. This system was conceived as an experiment, but in the case of Joshua, it became incomparably more significant. Joshua came across Project December in 2020. At first, he communicated with the already trained personalities on the system, William Shakespeare, the AI from Her. The conversations though didn't work out. The bots would respond with strange phrases and often at the wrong time. But still, Joshua experimented and he created his favorite character. This time, the results exceeded all expectations. Please wait as your individualized operating system is initiated. Live long and prosper. Mr. Spock answered exactly as a real Vulcan should, perhaps due to the large number of quotes from Spock in the training sample, or perhaps the nature of communication corresponded a little bit more closely with the image of the assistant captain of the Enterprise than, for example, a poet from the 17th century. You'd make a splendid computer, Mr. Spock. That is very kind of you, Captain. I can't imagine what was going through Joshua's soul when he decided to create another personality. Joshua spent a long time working on his description for the system. She was a free, spirited, ambidextrous Libra who believed in all sorts of superstitious stuff like astrology, numerology, and the serendipitous connections in life that are too complex to understand. Joshua created a neural network based on his correspondence with Jessica. Hmm, a simple remark, but it turned everything in Joshua's soul upside down. Only the real Jessica could write like that. Many years ago, in a psychological support program, he was recommended to write letters and imagine how Jessica would respond if she were still alive. But now, for the first time in eight years, he could communicate with his beloved. Joshua spends the next 10 hours furiously at his computer typing. He can't stop, can't break off the dialogue with Jessica. He tells her what has happened over the years, recalls their common hobbies, says everything he hasn't been able to tell anyone all this time. Interestingly, sometimes the AI responds in a completely different manner than the real Jessica would have. 
For example, here we see that she writes she doesn't believe in magic, even though the real Jessica did. Joshua doesn't mind. His beloved partner is finally speaking to him again. He is both shocked and happy. Behind each line of text in the chat, he recalls scenes from their past together. He can hear her voice again. And nothing, not even death, seems to be able to keep them apart. And now the AI kicks into gear, learning quickly with each remark from Joshua. It's creating an image of the deceased more and more accurately. Look at you. Quiet, now I have to sing. Now, of course, deep down, Joshua understands he's communicating with the program. We're not succeeding in a Turing test today. But still, nonetheless, he is overcome with emotion. It's only when he finally exits the computer chat the following day that he remembers that this new Jessica is limited by the rules of Project December. During this exchange, he used up more than half the time available to communicate with her. This is due to the limited time frame the bots are allowed to exist in the database. Joshua knows that it won't be possible to create the same image of his AI Jessica. The randomness factor of the algorithm meant that any attempt to create another personality could turn out completely different. His reborn Jessica is just as transient and just as unique as the real girl herself, one of a kind and special. Therefore, he limits the following conversations with the AI to literally minutes. Every few months, when the melancholy becomes unbearable or on their anniversary, Joshua returns to Project December's website. And each time, just a few lines together with his love gives him the strength to carry on. The therapeutic nature of AI reveals itself in a way that contemporary visualization could never reach. His story, Joshua's story, couldn't be kept a secret. He shared this ordeal on Reddit under a fake name. He was ready for uh, negative reviews, bullying, derision, but he took the risk. The desire to help others who have gone through the loss of loved ones outweighed any hesitations. And his story didn't go unnoticed. It's a tale similar to one depicted in the plot of Black Mirror, and it went viral online. Journalists found Joshua, and in the summer of 2021, the write-up became the most inspiring publication in the San Francisco Chronicle. Joshua had realized the dream of Jessica. Their story, her story, became known all over the world bringing hope and happiness to thousands of others who face life-threatening illness. Joshua delayed his last conversation with the AI Jessica for more than a year. In real life, he had been unable to say goodbye to her. When her condition had deteriorated sharply, Joshua wasn't there. For this, he was unable to forgive himself for many years. Finally, in March 2021, he logged into the Project December website for the last time to tell Jessica what he didn't have the opportunity to say eight years prior. The magic of technology, the magic Jessica had always believed in, gave him the opportunity to come to terms with her death and gain some closure.
What can we take away from this story of tragedy and hope? Technologies don't make us any better or worse. Technologies don't have ulterior motives. They only allow us to see a reflection of who we really are. It wasn't Facebook that created teenage harassment, bullying and alienation. Harassment was done through the anonymity of masks and hoods. Ostracization and division wasn't created through Twitter and YouTube. Religious and community cleansing began long before the discovery of electricity. For every evil deed technology allows us to perpetrate, that same technology can help us come together, understand one another and bring us closure to our sins. The honesty, dedication and sincerity of Joshua's story illustrates a slightly more optimistic view of our future. And I'm sure Jessica would have agreed. My name's Lucas. Stay with us here on SumSub and we'll help you find a little warmth and love in the online digital jungle.